into this space of healing with Heretta. I ask that you just sit back, unwind, drop those shoulders, and allow me to speak to your heart, your soul, your mind, body, and spirit. Let's enjoy this ride. Hey y'all, hey, welcome back. So hopefully you enjoyed the extended holiday weekend. It was Memorial Day, so hopefully you was able to take some time and honor those who we lost in battle, but also got some R&R and a little time with family and friends. Personally, I was able to hook up with some girlfriends this weekend and had a good time. You know, it's always nice to see some familiar faces and catch up like old times, like nothing had left. So if you follow me on my social media, you got to see some of my girlfriends who I posted in my stories. And we've been friends for a long time, <laughs> a very long time, but going all the way back to some of them was from middle school, high school, as well as college. So it was good catching up, but all in all, I enjoyed my weekend. I got to watch I don't know. I don't. Do you guys ever binge? I was in a binge of this show called The Empress, and it was a limited series on Netflix. But it was, mm, I want to say, six episodes. But I just could not get enough. You see, I enjoy. Well, I've come to realize I enjoy period pieces more than anything. I enjoy the clothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I really realized this on uh, one of the shows on HBO. What is that show called? Oh, man. It's on HBO and H or Max Child. Everybody always changing a name to something. Hold on. Let me look this up real quick. HBO Max. Period piece. Period. Oh, they, period dramas. Duh. That's what it's called. The Gilded Age. Honey. If y'all fans of the Gilded Age, please let me know. <laughs> but their clothes is just everything, okay? I mean, I, I enjoy the dialogue and the story that goes along with it. But I really enjoy period pieces. I, I discovered that with that. Uh, I really didn't get into Bridgerton like that. Mm, I might revisit it. But anyway, The Empress was pretty good. Just to warn you, if you are looking to watch it, it is um, dubbed over. So... It was made in another language, and then they have voiceovers who, you know, do the acting. But all in all, I enjoyed it for the little short limited season series it was, but that's what I did with my weekend. Had a little fun with friends, also binge watched something, and then, uh, yeah, had domestic duties. Do you hear the enthusiasm in my voice? Operation Clean House, y'all. I just need to do a whole upheaval of removal of things so that um I can usher in this new energy all right so yeah so um I have a new entry for Ask Coretta if you do not know you can ask me anything and I will try my best to answer the question for you and to do that you can go on my website peacewithin111.com and tap on the page healing with heretta and then submit your question or story and i'll do my best to answer you so it's been a while and we have a new question so here we go i'm new to learning about spirituality and want to try some healing work from a healer but i don't know who to choose Great question. Well, I mean, you came to my page, so you, <laughs> duh, you should choose me. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> but know that that is a great question. And hopefully I can assist you with, you know, narrowing down your search and provide some tips on that. But yeah, of course you can come to see me. I'm just, I'm just saying you listen to me. So why not come and see me? But first of all, when getting energy work, I believe, or any type of healing work, period, it's important for you to identify 
what you are in need of a healer for just to begin with what are you seeking the healer for specifically is it emotional healing do you have some physical pain that's going on is it stress are you wanting to further develop with your spirituality have some spiritual growth those are questions that you need to ask first because believe it or not there's all different forms of healers so let me go through a couple um well of course you got a holistic health practitioner like myself but of course my background is nursing but you have holistic health practitioners now under my I don't practice under my nursing license that's something all by itself that is my license with the state of Ohio and with a license you got to do certain continued education you got to pay fees you got to stay on top of the laws all this other good stuff so that is a license but a lot of times with energy and healing work there's no certification I mean yeah there's necessarily no certifications or licenses that's needed thus far and it's kind of like a catch-22 because some people are just free willy-nilly and can just say I'm a healer and you don't understand how they got himself a healer when yeah but anyway that's a whole different story but with healers, you can get certain certifications to further enhance your healing work. But we'll we'll get into that a little later. But again, there's a variety of healers. <laughs> and like I said, we have holistic health practitioners, shamans, Reiki, energy healers, um, even vibrational sound healers, hypnotherapists, astrologists, acupuncturists, massage therapists, aromatherapists, herbalists. You see, it goes on and on and on. So, for instance, if you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm having physical pain, then I would suggest you look into a holistic health practitioner or someone who does Reiki or massage therapy or even someone who does acupuncture. That would be great for physical pain. You're like, nah, mine's is really related to some type of emotional or mental issue. Then I probably would suggest you have some type of spiritual coaching or energy healing or shamanic healing. You know, that's when they be going out in the forest and stuff and getting stuff done. Mm, I can't wait till I'm able to experience that. Or you might be like, no, Retta, I really have some trauma going on. Well, then maybe you want a hypnotherapist or an intensive energy or sound healing, body work type of situation. So more than anything, it's important for you to get clear on what you want to experience. So just to reiterate what I was saying before, in the U.S., most energy healing therapies like Reiki and shamanic healing and quantum healing and any type of like spiritual life coaches, we are not required to hold a license or certification. So that means anyone can call themselves an energy worker without any specific training or certification or, or licensing. But uh, those with license, like I said, with me being a nurse, it's because there's a standardization of care and a code of ethics that I got to follow. And, you know, that's clearly outlined for everyone who is up under that board. And of course, we got that continued edu education requirements. And of course, not to harm anyone. We have an oath of not harming anyone. So those are different things associated with uh, deciding what you're seeking the healer for in the first place. So once you become clear about why you want to go to a healer, then I would suggest you get some recommendations. So you can ask people around you, some friends, some families, even wellness practitioners that you know of and you trust for some kind of referral or recommendation for someone who can meet the needs that you already written out because you're clear, you're clear on it. And you could also, if they don't have any suggestions, then go ahead and go online and, and do a little search or whatnot. Um, to me, that's the best way to find an a healer, in my opinion, is the word of mouth asking for recommendations. And if you don't get any, then you can. The next best thing is to read reviews and testimonials on people's websites or social media or even wellness um, platforms. So even before you go looking really, really hard, I believe it's best for you to set the intention to find the right healer for you. OK, so once you find someone that might intrigue you, 
why don't you give that killer a call and see what you're picking up on? Because <laughs> me personally, I do have people who call and will be like, oh, well, I just have a few questions. I'm like, okay. So we'll an- I'll answer their questions and everything. And then they're like, okay, just talking to you makes me want to be with you. Your whole disposition um, excites me and I'm excited to try something new. And I'll be like, okay, well, I'll see you whenever. <laughs> so I know at times just talking to someone who you might be interested in that can calm your nerves and put you more at ease I have had experiences where people said that they looked on my website and saw my picture and immediately knew that I was the person to work with them so it's kind of like an internal feeling as well so you have to trust your gut instincts when you're searching for someone because energy work is intimate you don't want anybody and everybody working on you and again uh in the U.S. Ain't no certifications needed. So therefore, anybody could say, I could do this, that, and the other. And unfortunately, some people find out the hard way that um, by not trusting their gut instincts, that that person was not for them. So in my opinion, if you find somebody you like, first of all, talk to them. A lot of people have um, like discovery calls or consultation fees for a a lower cost than what their full session would be and it's always free to call or send a text message and see how they respond to you via email text phone and then get a a feeling for them that way but you also might want to ask questions First of all, you can ask what is their experience how did they even get into the healing work to begin with and also if they have a variety of certifications or if they had any schooling with energy. How many years have they been doing it? Do they enjoy what they do? What are the results to expect? A variety of things to ask and to get an understanding of who you're working with. I've even had people <laughs> who stalk me online, right? Who will look at my my page, my business page, as well as my personal page. And if you do that, Well, let me tell you, (laughs) she was like, well, me and my husband have been looking at you. We've really been stalking you. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, no, we've been stalking you for years now. And I'm like, oh, okay. And she's like, like, we really went all the way back in your stuff. And we've seen your continuously growing in your spirituality. I'm like, yeah. So I think that gave them reassurance is that they've seen me in this for so long, you know? So that's important. It's important. So once you've identified your needs and received your recommendations and everything, I believe it's best for you to figure out what's your price point? What are you paying? What are you wanting to invest in your spiritual healing or journey? And if you want it to be remote, which is like online healing, or do you want it to be in person? Do you want to have an individual experience or do you want to do it in a group setting? All those things are important. So for me personally, I do in-person healing sessions on Zoom, but I also do them in my office. And I've also done group healing sessions with my moon gathering. So it's a variety of ways to heal but I want you to know please 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 know did you see that did you feel that pause there (laughs) I want you to know though more than anything that you are your own greatest healer you can heal yourself no one can do the kind of subconscious healing and energy work that you can do on your own self just know that okay all right I need a healing for my soul. So give me a healing for my soul. All right. That's your song for the week. (laughs) It's called Healing and it's by Miss Kelly Price. And it was released in 2006. All right. Back to the pod. But anyway, once you figure it out how much you willing to pay and how much how, how you want the experience to be. Um, because there's a variety of ranges of the amount of time spent with the clients as well as pricing based on that healer's experience as well as their education. And I believe it's very, very important for people to know that people charge 
their worth and their value and you can't get upset when somebody says like yeah my healing work is worth five hundred dollars an hour and you'd be like what are you insane well if they believe they worth that then somebody paying it so allow them to do that i don't think pe- people realize that healers complete a lot of hours uh <laughs> prior to even working with people i know for personally for myself I spend a lot of time grounding and cleansing and clearing and doing a lot of energy work on myself so that I can stay clear and balanced so that I can work on other people's energetic bodies. So it's a lot of work. So I say allow people to charge what they charge and continue moving on. And you have the decision to say if it's right for you or not. All right. But more than anything, when it comes to choosing a healer, you got to trust your own intuition, that gut feeling, you know, that first initial talk or meeting. You know, we have these um, mind, body, soul conventions and stuff, and you can pick up on people from that. So let's say you want to try something new. You just want to get a reading. You can go to one of those events and kind of like use your intuition that we've been talking about for a while to decide who you want to work on. And if that's overwhelming for you, then of course go online and do some searching and everything. But more than anything, do not get bamboozled by those inboxes or DMs that you get from, uh, spiritual healers or priestess or people who just say that like oh well I feel that there's um an entity on you and you need my assistance to cleanse it off only I can do it for you if you hear anything like that run do not walk run away from that message because <laughs> when it's like, only I can do this for you Man, get out of here. You have the own power to heal yourself. I just told y'all that, right? So don't don't get bamboozled into that. And also don't get bullied with uncomfortable messages or recommendations that people give to you. Because a lot of people are capitalizing off of the excitement as well as the need for additional healing in your life. So a lot of people recognize that and are just running with it and taking advantage of people. So if you ever express any doubt and uh, you're just unsure with some something that someone's saying, you can just, you know, always reply like, I'll think about it. And if they like shame you and saying like, oh, well, never mind, you're not serious. And this is going to come. This is going to happen to you because you didn't decide to do this at this time. It's necessary. If they applying pressure, they are not for you. Again. Go with your gut instinct and trust your intuition, all right? So like I said before, um, you can always do a little test run, a consultation with someone. Some people offer free ones. Some just offer for a discounted rate. I know personally I've had people who just get like a, a three card reading with me just to pick up on my energy and see (laughs) what answers I could provide for them with that and then they'll decide like okay well I'm gonna come see you I'm gonna come into the office and have a session with you so whatever you feel you can always do a little mini consultation by giving a phone call sending the text getting a discovery call whatever it may be but you got to make sure that the person you are aligning with is right for you because every healer is not right for other people because I've turned people down before like you know what I don't think I'm I'm the one for you I have no shame in turning someone down (laughs) I, I, I know what I can do and what I cannot do I am not a miracle worker I just allow the divine to use me as a vessel to bless other people so with that being said I believe it's important to look at the ethics, the ethical practices of the healer. So if they telling you they a healer and everything and you look at them and you like, but you look distraught, but you look like you, you, you going through some things right now. Personally, I don't think I would want to work with somebody who looked distraught <laughs> or who, who are not expressing, you know, or, or, or living up to the methods that they are selling. Personally, It was a very difficult decision for me to finally um, accept the quote unquote title that I gave myself of an intuitive energy healer. Before I was just like, oh, I'm a holistic health practitioner. But when it comes to using the word healer, that is a person who heals. I didn't really take that title 
on until I recognize all the healing that I've done for myself throughout time and that I felt like I had tools to offer assistance to others. So that's when I changed my title to an intuitive energy healer. But I'm still a holistic health practitioner because I got a whole lot of certifications up under that. But anyway, I think it's important to look at the ethics of the healer and see what kind of boundaries they may have, what kind of ethical practice, what they stand for, what's their values, what's their beliefs. And again, you can always witness those kinds of things by looking at their social media or visiting their website or listening to their podcast, like me, or <laughs> going to their YouTube channel, whatever it may be. Do, do some research before you know you actually invest yourself in to a healer because you pay a certain amount and also you are opening someone up to your energetic body and more than anything there should be some type of transparency between you and a healer so what to expect like I have that on my website specifically what to expect so they know that it's fully clothed because unfortunately I have had people who think they're gonna get butt ball naked in here and I'm like "Uh uh-uh no 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 we stay fully clothed in here (laughs) There was a time I did massages, but I made it very clear that I only massaged the feet and the back. So that is very important for someone to be transparent with you. Also, I would suggest you only work with people who make you sign a consent, especially when you're doing in-person work. Online, it's really sometimes difficult to do the consent work, but in person, definitely have a consent so that you know that they're serious about the work that they're doing. Okay, and it protects you as well as it protects the healer. So with all that being said, just to recap, you want to identify again, what are you seeking the healing work for? Then decide what form of healing do you want? And then decide to ask for some recommendations from people, read up on testimonials as well as reviews gather any type of research or information that you need decide what your price point is and if you want an online session or remote session or in person or if you want to do it as an individual or if you want to do it in a group setting also do not get bamboozled by the fakery out here trust your instinct Do a little initial call or meeting or email and pay attention to their ethics. That's important. Because not all healers are the same. That's the best thing. There's plenty of variety amongst us all. So why not truly find a healer that's best for you? All right. And of course, I'm always here if you need me. I have plenty of certifications and, you know, things that allow me to be a great healer. (laughs) All right, y'all. That's it for today. Yeah, kind of light, huh? And on that note, I'm out. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Peace.